Tell you what guys, these waves are they're not crazy, but they're enough. And uh, while it's a relatively mild day, it's still pretty cold. I gotta say, I'm proud to go out on days like this. I know a lot of guys have packed it in. And I always feel like fishing in these conditions are just pretty much guys, just, it's a life thing kind of. Like doing things in conditions that other people bail on. I get a lot of pride in doing that. And I really, uh, I relish in my successes when I obtain them in conditions that are adverse or in conditions that, you know, just most people will bail on. Again, whether it's, you know, cold water in the winter and slinging big baits or, you know, going for a run at four in the morning, whatever it is, I'm attracted to that kind of stuff. Let's get, uh, let's get our ones and twos on here. Always be prepared to document, man, because you never know. Could be my first cast today, could be my last cast. I might catch the next state record today. Unlikely, but always put yourself in a position to be prepared. I don't want to regret saying, ooh, I didn't think it would have happened today. It's kind of a weird statement, like when, when would you think a state record would come, right? At last I checked, you really, really don't know. So assume every day, every cast, every outing, if you're serious about chasing trophies, that's kind of a testament to it. If you're serious and you put yourself always in a position to document that event. Now today, I'm going to be rocking my, uh, I guess I may as well look here. It's going to be jumping all over because of the uh, waves. If you guys have seen some of my past videos, some of you guys have lamented. They say, dude, you're setting a bad example. You should really have your... Uh, life vest on I, I won't argue with you guys I'm, it's always a good idea to wear it but I just you know it's my own thing I just out there I'm I'm very comfortable swimming very comfortable floating I don't drink <laughs> while I'm uh, while I'm fishing and I typically don't go on in adverse conditions but today there's an exception to the, what I just said these are adverse conditions the water's going to be cold the wind is kicking up and um, that combination of things an increased likelihood of potential for a, a failure with the with the waves coupled really with the cold if it's windy in the summer and i go wind big deal sometimes i jump out of the canoe on purpose in the summer but uh with water temperatures being cold uh you know the ability for your body to go into a quick state of shock and you know maybe not recover and not being able to swim or really even catch your breath if you're above water it's all a very real concern so in these conditions i absolutely get my pfd on absolutely i'm not going to play around with that stuff man Alright guys, so uh, you've heard this before, I'm going from point A to point B, <laughs> you can see these waves, I'm rolling man. Um, so I'm going, uh, I, I probably got like a 15-20 minute trek over to where I want to be, I want to fish this rock wall here, it's really cold today, hoping those rocks warm up a little bit. Um, top water temp, my transducer is still uh, stabilizing, or the thermometer in it is still stabilizing, from being in the car it was warmed up. When I launched it was at 49, now it's at 46. Although there could just be differences in the, the lake, but I don't know, three degrees is a lot. Anyway, I say all that because I'm gonna throw the, uh, 
the Mega Bass, the Big M. I'm gonna get that behind the boat as I go over to my spot here. See if a uh, see if a nice smally tackles this thing in the middle of the water column. This is the uh, mid runner. I'm gonna have a lot of line out though, so I'm gonna certainly be getting the most out of it. I think it's rated to go down to about 12 feet. <laughs> I'm in I'm in 96 feet of water. <laughs> That's a lot of line. Still going. Whoa! <laughs> what is going on? The boat is jumping. We are in 100 feet of water even. 99, there we go. That'd be pretty cool, right? If somebody picked it off in the, at a 12 feet of water with an absolute depth of 100. Let's get this Dream Smasher out there, guys. I think this is a good color. Got the little blade on here. See if we can find an aggressive fish in this uh, 45 degree water temp. Ooh, my uh, my drag was open. Okay, there we go. See if we can find any takers. Only got a little bit of time to fish here, guys. So basically I'm going to come at them from three approaches. I'm going to try a little bit of this flashy stuff just because I like the low angle of the sun and uh, being that we have a sunny day and it's warm as these days go. So we're going to see. Maybe we can get somebody to go on the uh, flashy bait. Going uh, pretty slow. Number one kind of prospect though this time of year is things like the 8 inch Huddleston or those large real prey lures. And then also a jig. Oh, and a blade bait. That's kind of like my big, my my big three. This this guy here is just a last minute call because of the conditions. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's do it. I just got a couple casts out, but I'm pretty pumped. I'm pretty amped. I really love this time of year. I love these cold water temps. We're in the mid 40s. I've had some of my really. I mean, people always like kind of paint with a big brush and say, oh, I've had my best success. No, literally, when I think back, most of my big fish, that being more than half, right, 51% or greater, have come in water temps under 50 degrees. And I can think of a couple of really my notable catches that came in between 41 and 45 degrees. So I don't consider this swinging for the fences. I actually consider this a really, really profitable, just, you know, advantageous time of year. Not many bites for sure, but good, good time to stick, truly stick to the big stuff uh, and just, you know, just go for it, man. This is the time of year. You're not sharing the water with anybody. They're not seeing that flurry of various lures and things buzzing and clacking and, you know, there's not much out there. And I think all times of year, the natural, the big natural swim baits, you know, it's what makes them special. But particularly when there's n almost nobody out there fishing for bass, once you get into the true winter months, I think they're just that much more appealing to you know throw things like the big Huddleston, um, you know the the real prey lures and any of those type of lures. Today I have uh, the real prey. I'm also throwing the Dream Smasher, which is a little bit more generic, but it's not a slow moving lure. They don't have as much time to look at it. Uh, but don't you know don't underestimate these fish. Uh, while the bulk of my bites have come from really using those big ba uh, baits slow, I still will get every year a couple fish on kind of moderate pace retrieves. If it's close enough and they're aggressively feeding, man, you just don't don't count them out. Those fish can move. You know, once you hook them, you see how fast they move. They always have the ability to do it, even if it seems like they, they wouldn't with that cold water temp. They're uh, they're good, good hunters and good at staying alive. So let's proceed. Driver here. So I'm just focusing on this rock wall here. Uh, maybe these rocks are with the sun on them. We got a nice sunny day. You know, rocks always attract fish because they're always attracting smaller things, the nooks, the crannies, just the life that uh, you know happens around rock walls. So it's just kind of. You guys know, I don't need to tell you, just smaller things be getting larger things in terms of the, uh, you know, food chain. 
out here with the uh, the real prey. I have that on an owner 10 aught three quarter ounce. I have a few of these real preys, and uh, I purposely have that on a three quarters ounce so I can keep this one deep. And then uh, it's not attached to the hook. It's not like one of those flashy spinner deals. It's just one of those little screw-in ones. You can just add those little uh, flashy blades to anything, right? You just screw it in with like a hitchhiker, and then it's on a rotating uh, swivel there. You could see. I like doing it like that. This way, I'm not committed to it on the hook. All right, so we hit a couple different casting angles. I'm in 33 feet of water, so I'm going to parallel me and explore that depth. I think I'm going to have to take a seat, guys. This, uh... Yeah. We're going to have to sit, man. I normally never do, but this wind is just a little bit too sketchy today. Let's get set up here with the right angle. That looks good. All right, can I set a hook? I see a lot of you kayak guys setting the hook seated. I never do this. But safety comes first, man. If it was the summertime, I'd say whatever. Go in, get wet, you know, hop back in. But with these cold water temps, I'm not trying to risk it. So, let's see, man, if we get that bump. Can I set the hook? I, I, I've never even, I'm totally unpracticed to setting the hook. Make sure I don't hit the camera. Let's see, boom, we don't want to do that. So we're gonna have to set kind of more vertically. All right. Let's give you a little bit, a little bit better vantage. How's that? That's good, right? Yeah. What's up, what's up? wind is kicking up. <laughs> it was more serious than when I launched. That's not cool. Getting those little white caps, that's, uh, that's the point where I usually won't launch. But it kind of sucks when they come up later in the day and you're already out there. Nice long cast. So I'm throwing mostly big stuff today, but um, as I often like to do, I, I don't like to uh, just fully commit to big. Uh, what I what I do is before I leave a spot, right? So I've, I've exhausted all my big bait opportunities. Before I leave a spot, I like to throw a traditional lure from the small lure because at that point, I'm going to move on anyway. And I, I have everything to gain and nothing to lose by covering that area uh, with a small lure. And the reality is, guys, if... <laughs> If you ever look at some of these like fish and wildlife or game photos where they do uh, electroshocks or sometimes they do lake surveys, they actually cull some fish and by cull I mean kill and they cut them open and see what they're eating. Big fish, since they have the capacity to eat big things, you will find some big things in their mouth. But it's not exclusive what you'll see. You might see a bass with an eight inch trout in its mouth and it also has, you know, five or 10 small fish in its mouth. So I'm a firm believer and my experience has been that really really putting in the time like committing a lot of time to big baits has given me without question more big fish than when i was just a traditional uh, size bait fisherman but i'll also say without any hesitation this is it's kind of common sense fish those big baits but don't don't go all in don't be hard-headed and say i'm not going to throw anything little you're you know again it's not that you're going to go to a new area and not fish the big baits but before you leave a given area you fish it with your big baits cover it with your small baits. Again, you have everything to gain, nothing to lose. And it's not just conjecture, guys. I There's been numerous times where I've covered an area with all sorts of big baits, trying to you know elicit that bite. And then I downsized to something much more moderate or even small, and I got bit. And sometimes those bites are not just average fish. Sometimes it was a big fish. And that big fish, I have to think, watched all those big baits go by. It just didn't want it, but it did want that small thing. So. The only thing you lose is a little bit of time, you know, but what I do is I don't cover the area as thoroughly with my small baits. I give it more than just a once over, 
but with you know I'll really pick it apart with my big baits the small baits I kind of just cover it I feel good about it I know that I've showed them everything and then I move on and I say all that because right now guys I'm going to cover a, uh, a casting angle here that I've just covered thoroughly <coughs> with some of my big baits and I'm going to throw uh, something these are discontinued but I happen to have some of them and I really like the way they swim it's a uh, Matt's minnow they swim great and I wish you would make them again. I mean, there's a million baits on the market that essentially do the same thing of the same size. But um, I don't know. These just have a realism, a realism to them, like so many of Matt Lore's things do. And I have it on a uh, underspin here. I forget which one this is. One of the more popular ones. Um, here it is. This is it the bluegill colored bait? That's the bluegill colored underspin. I don't get too caught up in that color, but it's just a nice. Pretty compact package there. I think all in that's about a four inch bait. A little flash. And we're just gonna slow roll this along the bottom where I just slow rolled some of my uh, larger soft swim baits. See what happens. All right, let's, let's drag this little guy along the bottom here. It looks so good. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Story of the day, another uh, not a backlash, it's just an overrun. It got too, too ahead of itself. So we're going to hit a couple of the casting angles here. Not as many as I hit with my big stuff. We're going to hit a couple casting angles here, slow roll in the underspin. And, uh, and then we're going to move to the uh, next spot. And then fire away with the big soft swim baits. Sometimes when I do get tagged uh, on the smaller baits after I've thrown my big stuff, I, I always, you know, you, you try to put yourself in the mind of the fish or the environment, and I sometimes wonder, you know, I hit that casting angle maybe a couple times. I was like, I know that fish saw. You can't, you know, not see a, an 8 or a 9-inch trout come through, uh, particularly if you're making a couple casts, you know, in, in semi-close casting angles. I was like, that fish was aware of it, it didn't want to go for it. And I sometimes wonder if that doesn't heighten the fish, if it doesn't kind of uh, get them, you know, kind of cognizant or aware or more into like a predatory mindset versus if they're just sitting down there and everything's quiet and nothing's going on. Sometimes I like to do that with a, like a lipless crank. I'll let a lipless crank go to the bottom and uh, I'll just just to stir them up, just to cause some commotion, just to stir them up. I mean, if I get bit, then wonderful. But really, what I'm trying to do is just cause some commotion to kind of perk them all up. And my real intention is to fire back in there with something like a, a, a Huddleston. You never know, right? You never know. I know a lot of people say, and and I, I still kind of think this to a degree too, like that first cast for a true giant you know, is everything. Like you want the area to be pristine. You don't want to have like four or five casts in and the fish will wise up. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's like, I don't take any of this stuff as gospel. None of us truly know, right? We don't assign data to this stuff. So I, I like to sometimes think other ways about it. Like maybe I can get them heightened. You know, you look at fish tank, you know, fish in a fish tank or whatever, stir them up, you know, get them excited. And then bring in that big thing after the fact, after you've got them excited, and now maybe that big fish will, will jump on that. It's worth a try, guys, right? What do you got to lose? A little bit of time. I'm gonna turn this one off for a little while. What the hell? Where did that come from?
right guys throwing the uh, real prey this is the forage trout this is a nice size man I have the uh, the larger model he calls it the seven and three quarter inch size this one here I believe is seven inches uh, kind of in the realm of a HUD 68 but definitely has more profile than a HUD 68 basically splits the difference between a HUD 68 size and like an 8 inch HUD or in terms of real prey well he doesn't really have anything that's that much I don't know just think think a middle ground between a HUD 68 and like an 8 inch trout variant it's a nice lure about three ounces nice slow kick I love his finishes so natural you can see that iridescent pink hue stripe there really really nice stuff super natural We can get a taker. Get a taker on the real prey today. I haven't caught any on this particular model yet, but I also haven't fished this one all that much. Uh, I normally would be fishing the larger size, the seven three quarters. <laughs> I have it in my glove box. I always kind of surround myself with some lures. I just like to be around cool fishing gear, and I like my big swim bait. So I usually like have a couple in the glove box or like my little dash panel there. I just check them out as I'm driving throughout the day. I drive a lot. And, uh, and that's where it stays. It's in there right now at the parking lot. I realized it as I was halfway across the lake. So we're going to use the uh, smaller version because we don't have a choice. <laughs> Right, a couple casts with that, guys. Like I said, we're not taking a ton of time with the traditional stuff. We just we just want to give the area the once over before we move on. All right, so let's move on. We fit that with a number of big baits. We showed them some things. I did get my first strike of the day there, which I'm like 90% sure is a pickerel. Let's move on. We're just going to fish this rock wall. We're not trying to cover a lot today. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Fish always relate to this rock wall, particularly the today that all morning it was very sunny. You have to think that maybe these rocks warmed up a little bit. So, um, yeah. We're just going to keep it simple. We don't have a lot of time. The good part is, is that my lures are the only lures in the water over here. I only see like two or three other boats and they were out in deep water. I'm assuming they were going for a lake trout. They are really positioned out deep, and this place does go deep. A lot of it's over 100 feet. So that seems to be where they were. So in my defense, I'm probably the only bass fisherman out here. I haven't seen anybody else near me. And so all my big swim baits, my Huddlestones and my real praise and everything, those fish aren't seeing anything else today. Nothing else fake. And when I show them something, and not only am I showing them something, but it looks very real, like a real player or a Huddleston, I gotta tell you guys, I got a lot of confidence. Once you <laughs> eliminate all the other players, that being the other fishermen, and all those thousands of casts and traditional lures and everything, get that out of the water, all the flash and the noise. It's kind of just you with your big natural baits. Good things happen, man. That's been my experience. Good things happen. All right, let's start off this area, guys. Let's keep starting with the Dream Smash. I'm trying to get some fish on this. I mean, I'm trying to get fish on everything, but I'm trying to put together a review. I haven't been fishing it too long. I'm really curious to see, because I know this one doesn't really play too well in the cold water. But I want to see if, if I'm on my medium pace retrieve, if I can get some winter fish on this. You can't crawl this one like you can with a Huddleston. You can go kind of slow, but it's just not what it's meant to do. The rigidity and the stiffness and the thickness of the plastic is intentional. So it means that you have to 
bring it to a certain speed to kind of overcome that resistance of the plastic to it doesn't want to move but once you eclipse that point what you're doing is it, it sends out a quite kind of nervous and violent kick to it and I'm just sure the energy is different than with a thin lure because even though the tail is kicking you just have a lot more a different swim signature because the, the plastic is rigid you can just imagine the energy from a rigid plastic kind of moving in the water versus something soft. So I'm not going to try to crawl it. I have my uh, other, I have a real prey on deck for that. This one I'm trying to go, I'm trying to find the sweet spot. I can't really feel the tail kick. So when I get it closer to the boat, I'm trying to get dialed in with what's the minimum speed I can go and still get the tail to kick reasonably well. I mean, it kicks ever so slightly if you go really slow, but it, it's like, it's almost no action at all. It's almost like, it's like bringing in a, a brick at that point. So it is kind of like a, a moderate action you have to go. Yep. We'll find it. We're doing our homework. got the weedless model on uh, well frankly that's all I have in these uh, shads is the weedless model he does have the exposed hook models I would kind of like that for the angle of the line tie it gives a more natural swimming uh, angle in the water however there's some random sunken timber around these areas and so I really don't want to hit that so the weedless model will do just fine Got another bump, guys. And that one, I'm not sure. That one didn't have the uh, the suddency of a pickerel. It's very light, but it was a bump. That's something else. There's a tree or something there I just hit. The first one was a very sharp impact. Huh, look at that. Something pushed it through. Very interesting. Let's do another casting angle here, guys. Probe a little bit deeper. Let's mosey on down this way a little bit. Big lay down over here. I'll see if we can get this uh, dream smasher through it. Let's see if anybody's in there. That's the uh, six inch weedless model. I put that little hitchhiker with the uh, underspin on it. Three quarter ounce, because I'm trying to run this one deep. Trocar Tenor. That's a real thing, too. If you look for it, you would think they don't exist. So you see online the nine to 11. They made these a while ago, and I bought a bunch, and I haven't seen them since. But it is a it is a ten lot, three quarter ounce. Pretty cool configuration.
Got him. Got him coming out of the tree. Got him. Fish on. I was doing some short pumps and then I was dead sticking it and then pumping dead stick. Oh, it's a big pickerel. Ah, big pickerel. I thought it was a bass. Well, whatever, guys. It is what it is. Big pick. Okay, let's adjust our grip here. All right, guys, the lure just popped out, but that's the first uh, first fish of the day. That's a solid pick right there. It's every bit of five pound pickerel. Came on that dream smasher. All right, everybody, so I just repositioned the boat. I was so backlit here, and I wanted you to get a good look at this fish here. Uh, again, this is on the... Uh, there we go. That was on the six inch uh, Dream Smasher. Weedless, bringing it through a tree. 45 degree water temp. Not the species we're looking for, but uh, man, I tell you what, if it's not a big bass in the winter, it's a really big pickerel. I, I don't know where the small fish go, but they just disappear. It's like when you get a bite, it's, it's a big one. Got my scale here, got my measuring board. My personal best pickerel is 27 inches. I got it early this year, actually. 27 inches and it was five something. I want to say it was like five three or maybe five six. So uh, we're gonna see what this one cracks in at if I don't throw my <laughs> fish grip away. It's definitely got the weight. I think on the weight it'll be a personal best. I don't know about on the length. Just trying to get a good grip here, man. I got sliced real good by one of these guys a couple years ago. I didn't have the right grip in the mouth. So there we go. That's a solid uh, Northeast New Jersey pickerel right there. Let's get a length and weight right quick. Oh, she's close. She's 20, tip of the tail almost hits 27. The bulk of the tail is at like 26, 26 inches long. Let's see if we can snag a pick of that. All right, guys, so she's coming in at 26 inches. You see there, we're zeroed. Let's see how much this one weighs. Survey says. Oh yeah, that's my personal best uh, pickerel. It's over six. Six two. Six pound, two ounce, 26 inch pickerel, man. Sweet. Nice, on the Dream Smasher. Let's let her go. That's it. She's gonna swim away, man. Woo! That's why you come out in the winter, man. Listen, I'm not fishing for pickerel, but new personal best on the uh, new personal best anything, man, is awesome. 6'2", 26 inch pickerel. That's awesome. Good stuff. Man. 
Throwing the semi big swim bait, man. That's my first uh, real catch of note on these dream smash dream smashers. I haven't been fishing them that long. Hopefully, we can get some other giants. All right, everybody. So that's going to be a wrap. Let's do a formal outro. You know what? I'm so glad that I introed this video because going out in the winter, I got to tell you guys, a lot of times uh, I go out once that water temperature gets low and uh, you don't get anything. But particularly, that's because if you follow the channel, you know I throw a lot of big baits. Uh, so that's just kind of par for the course when you're searching for those giants. Very, very excited, man. Very excited. You know, I know a lot of people don't like pickerel. What do they call them? Like snot rockets and stuff. I've always liked them a lot. They are just awesome apex predators in the same vein as pike and muskie. Just that streamlined, toothy, aggressive killing machine. I thought the camouflage on the side, I've always thought they were awesome. The only thing I don't like about them is losing my lures to them. And I do lose a lot of lures, particularly of that size, like those kind of six inch swim baits. I've lost a ton to pickerel over the years. This one stayed on today, which is awesome. But the main thing is guys here, the takeaway is it's the winter. It's easy to stay inside, but my my mindset always says go out there, make that cast, and you just never know what's going to happen. But particularly here in the winter, man, you're not sharing the water with a lot of people. It's just you and a handful of other people, particularly bass fishermen. They fall off precipitously, and you know that's what we're going for. I'm always in the you know searching for that monster bass, but you just hey, I caught a new PB today, man, a six-two northeast uh, pickerel coming in at just uh, just under 27 inches, 26 and a half or so. So uh, the trip was well worth it. It's awesome. I'm, I'm stoked that I got that, that giant pickerel. And uh, that's it, man. So uh, if you're in a part of the country where the water's still soft, get out there, chuck those big baits. I really, I can't advocate enough for chucking big baits in the winter. Um, I, I, it has become an actual, actual confidence time for me. Bundle up, do whatever you have to do to stay warm, but you know, take your time out there. But this is the time of year where just whatever species you get is going to be big. I don't know where those little fish go this time of year, but they don't bite. When you, you won't get many bites. And granted, guys, when you're chucking the big stuff, a lot of times you won't get any bites. But this is a really good time of year to get a giant. And it's not just this fish here. I've caught some of my biggest bass in water temps. Literally, as I think about it, some of my, I think more than half of my best bass have come in water temps under 50 degrees on big soft plastics generally slow moving baits it's a great time of year guys and um anyway moral of the story is you just never know get out there sling it you never know man you might feel that tick on the line set the hook and then realize you got something pulling back with a lot of weight to it and there's that's just whew, my heart's still racing because at first i thought i had a giant bass on but anyway new pb pickerel is awesome Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me for a little bit, guys. And um, hey, don't know if I'm going to be able to upload again or if I have uh, any more outings here before the my waters turn hard and turn into ice. But um, if I don't talk to you before next year, everybody, tight lines. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Everybody stay safe with regard to Corona and everything. And uh, yeah, I'll see all you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.